Hi folks, Travis Fox here with FoxOptic.com. Today we're going to be taking a look at the 350 series Pulsar Thermions. I'm starting to get a lot of questions on what are the differences between these. So as you can see, I'm pretty proud of myself over here. Uh, I got, I had to get myself out the 2x12, made myself a really nice jig here. Uh, what this is going to allow me to do though, in all seriousness, is we're going to be comparing the XQ50 to the XP50 to the XM50 by mounting them like this. I've got them on a tripod uh, ball head and I'm able to move them all as one unit. So the benefit to that is I've got them all aligned correctly. I'm using uh, Burris's signature rings here they have like a little carbon fiber insert which allowed me to point them all the same and then i got them as close as i can then i just went in and adjusted the x y axis so they're all pointed approximately the same at 200 yards you'll notice that they're off a bit because of you know the angularity this one i, I mastered everything off the center so when i'm out there at distance this is going to be a little left and a little right is you know depending on where we're at in the in the cross but uh, long story short, for all practical purposes, going to give you a really good idea of field of views, uh, what you're going to see in images and things like that, which is the point. Uh, so we're going to take them outside. We're going to take a look at the different units. Um, and I think that you'll be able to understand a little bit more about them as you see this. So let's take them outside and see what we've got. Okay, so over here we have the new Thermion XQ50. Uh, three and a half to 14 here in the middle we have the Thermion XP 50 2 to 16 and over on this side we have the Thermion XM 50 5.5 to 22 X so we're going to be taking a look inside of them here um, I've got them focused over there on that green bin um, I'm going to hit nuke on them all three here real quick we'll make sure we're starting with the fresh uh, calibration um, so anyways, what you can see right off the bat is the difference in field of view. I've got these perspectively set as close to one another as I could get them. They're going to be off a tiny bit because I set them at about 200 yards and there's enough angularity between them that they're off a little bit. But uh, long story short, you can see where they're all pretty much focused at the same point. Um, so immediately you're going to see that big difference in field of view. I'm gonna bring them down here and kind of roll around. So as you can see, um, you know, pretty tremendous difference in field of view between the different units. Another thing you're gonna notice, like we'll go over here on this horse, is in the XM50 model, you'll see where, because it has a higher base magnification, it's a little more critical on its depth of field. So I can certainly clear that up a little bit with a focal adjustment, while the wider field of unit or field of view units are maintaining their focus pretty good. Uh, so one thing I want to show you here, you can see where I'm at the 3.5x. So one of the big questions I get. Will the XP50 perform just as good? So let's run it up to the same 3.5X. You can get a pretty good idea there with the two of them setting side by side on which one you think is, you know, is better if there's any difference. Uh, if we want to run the magnification scaling up, let's take it up to seven. So I can do a tap over here, roll the encoder up to seven. Uh, we'll set them at exactly the same amount, kind of give you an idea. I think what you're going to find, to be quite truthful with you, is you're just going to get more versatility out of the XP. The, the richer sensor is allowing them to put more information on the screen at a higher resolution, uh, still give you the ability to not only zoom into it, to go just a touch higher at the maximum zoom value of 16 on the XP50 versus 14 on the XQ50. So essentially you're getting a more versatile unit for the extra 1200 bucks. Um, the XM50 over here, you can kind of see it sitting over here by itself, is a little bit more of an odd duck in the sense that it's starting with a very, very high base magnification with the intention of being able to, to get much higher. Um, the benefit to that is obviously going to be the guy that is shooting the majority of the time long range and long range only. Uh, the major benefit to that's going to be two things is one better long you know super long range image 
you get the benefit of your reticle adjustments being smaller. So in other words, you have better precision in your reticle adjustments. Um, but effectually, if, if you kind of cut right to the chase of it, I think the mathematics of the devices kind of explain uh, what you're going to get. So you're getting more versatility out of the X, you know, the XP50 simply because the sensor has has approximately, you know, in the case of the comparison to the XQ50 where the numbers are a little more similar, it has almost three times the sensor uh, receptors on it. So you know, it's, it's starting with a much higher resolution image. So it, therefore, they're able to go with a much wider field of view, which is essentially putting it more information on the screen. And as we're zooming into that, uh, gaining pixelization, but yet trying to keep that useful as you zoom in, you can see where you got to start with a lot more information to end up there. And then, of course, the, you know, the additional cost of the sensor is what's driving the cost of that unit up in the comparison. So if you don't feel like you need that additional versatility, then you can save some money and go with the new XQ50 or potentially even the new XQ38 that will be coming out. Um, you know, but in the meantime, if you can afford it, just know that you're always going to get uh, the highest amount of versatility coupled with the highest resolution image at base magnification in the XP series uh, units. Whereas the XM50, I don't know if you're, you know, if you're kind of catching uh, what's going on here, what we're talking about, but the XM50, a bit of an odd duck in the sense that it, you know, it's, I would consider it a more specifically purposed unit. So if you know if you're the guy that the XM50 is right for you, you know, you'll know that that's the right unit for you based on the way that you're going to be using it and that's going to characteristically be the guy that you know, maybe somebody a little bit older that needs that extra magnification. In other words, they need that uh, object to appear larger on the screen and or potentially the guy that just wants to be able to shoot much longer range um, needs that really finite uh, reticle adjustment and needs as much magnification as possible, but not nearly as concerned with field of view. Um, so if you're if you're hunting hogs or if you're doing tournaments, you're going to certainly find the field of view is going to get you on targets quicker. It's going to give you a little bit higher situational awareness as you're, you know, you have more boundary around your reticle. So for that reason, I think the wider field of view models, in my opinion, make make more sense for most of the way I use it. But you know, certainly there are some instances where the higher magnification might be the right thing for you. You know, if you're if you're identifying or or detecting with another device and relying solely on your thermal for identification, then that might be an instance where, you know, if you're doing that just recreationally shooting, you know, don't really care about follow-ups all that much, then then certainly the narrower field of view and higher magnification of the XM might make sense. Again, the XQ I think is a good alternative. It's new for this year. It's going to be a good alternative for the guy that's trying to get a mixture of the wider field of view, a decent amount of magnification, I would call it more general purpose, and trying to save cost. Whereas, you know, again, the XP50 is going to give you the highest amount of versatility, but it's also going to come in at the highest cost. Okay, I hope that helps you understand what the difference between those units are. Again, if you have any questions at all, I keep my calls forwarded to my cell about any time I'm not in the office. So you can call me pretty much any time, 7 a.m. to 11 p.m. Central's time. Uh, my number is toll-free, 877-806-2977. Uh, feel free to shoot me an email. Uh, fox at foxoptic.com is my email address. Or you can text me. 660-341-9370 uh, if you've got questions. I do have currently, I mean, I don't know how long they're going to last, but I've got a couple of the XQ50s in stock. Um, 
I've got a decent quantity of XP50s and the XM50s available right at the moment. Uh, so if you know if you're looking for any of these models, do have them. Uh, one thing I will mention while I got you guys here, if anybody is a customer of mine that was waiting on the APS batteries, I also have a fair quantity of both the APS2 and APS3 batteries in stock. They just came in today so if you were waiting on them uh, we sell most of ours in package kits where you get a mount and a couple of batteries and a cover um, in the kits the way we we ship them out so if you ordered a kit from us and we're waiting on batteries they would have shipped out today if you're looking for batteries i do have some so again i hope you found this informative um, my name is travis fox i'm with foxoptic.com thanks for watching and have a great day